All right, so get this right. You finally snag tickets to see Wicked. How exciting is that? How exciting. But even before you pick out your outfit for opening night, uh, there's already like a whole storm brewing online. And it's all about the movie poster. Yeah, it's true. And it's like, it goes way deeper than people just messing around with fan art. It really does. This thing, it really gets to like the heart of how we see representation, especially for actors of color in Hollywood. And we've got a stack of articles about this, all about Cynthia Erivo's reaction to how uh, some fans are editing that poster. So let's just, you know, dive right in. Let's do it. Basically, fans are editing the poster to... Well, to hide Cynthia Erivo's face. Right. Like, you know how the original Broadway poster kind of hid Elphaba's? Yeah. But what started as, I don't know, maybe a little nod to the stage version took a kind of a turn, wouldn't you say? Yeah. And I think we really need to unpack why that, what seems like this tiny edit, you know, sparked such a huge reaction. Erivo even took to Instagram and called it like the wildest, most offensive thing she'd ever seen. Oh. She even used words like degrades and erases to talk about these edits. And to really get this, we need to look at the um, like the power dynamics and all this. Mm -hmm. Erivo, I mean, she's not just any actress, right? She's a black woman. And this is an industry, let's be honest, that doesn't always roll out the red carpet for black stories or treat them with the respect they should have. So true. And it's even more than just the poster itself. Like, Erivo called out some other jokes that fans were making online. Yeah, like what? There were those weird AI videos of her in a brawl with Ariana Grande. Rush. And even, like, crude questions about, you know, her appearance, referencing the whole green skin thing. It's true. And that's, like, the key point here. Those extra details, they paint this picture of disrespect and objectification that goes way beyond just artistic choice or harmless fun. Could some people see these jokes as, I don't know, no big deal? Yeah, maybe. But how often do these jokes target black women in the spotlight? How often are they turned into caricatures or treated as less than human? I think that's the real conversation we need to be having. Makes you think, right? Like, is it even possible to separate the original intent of that Broadway poster design from how those same visuals might hit people today? I mean, the whole context is totally different now. That's a tough one. But I think it's important to, like, acknowledge that a lot of fans probably saw those edits as, I don't know, just, like, harmless throwbacks, you know? They just mm -hmm. wanted to give a shout-out to the original. Right. But this whole situation, it opens up this really important conversation about intent versus impact, especially online. You know, you can totally... Uh, do something not meaning anything bad by it, but it can still like really affect someone, especially online, you know? Yeah, totally. And it just shows how important it is to really listen to people, especially people who are like often marginalized when they talk about what they're going through. Right. They're often pointing out things that other people, they might not even see, you know? Yeah. Because they don't have that experience. Exactly. And in this whole thing, Erevo is using her platform to like, Talk about something really important, right? I mean, this isn't just about some poster. It's about, like, representation. It's about respect. And it's about realizing how art and uh, someone's identity, how those are all connected, especially with social media. Stuff spreads so fast. So social media, oh, it's a whole other beast, right? It's like yeah. the Internet's given fans this crazy access to creative mm -hmm. stuff and this influence over it, too. Yeah, yeah. Like you see it with all the fan edits and the memes and the online discussions. It's all part of it now. And that can be great. Like, fandom can be a really good thing. But, I mean, this whole thing shows how it can go the other way, too, you know? Absolutely. There's this fine line between, like, really celebrating something and then kind of trying to, I don't know, take over in a way that's not cool toward the people who actually made it. Right, right. It's almost like, you know, it's not enough to just, like, create like nobody's watching anymore. Yeah. Because... Let's be honest, everyone and their mother is watching. Exactly. And anything you put out there, it's like up for interpretation or like even worse, misinterpretation. This one image has like opened this whole can of worms, you know? <laughs> yeah, it really does. It really shows how the whole relationship between like the audience, the creators and uh, and how they express themselves artistically, how that's changing. Right. It's like uncharted territory in a lot of ways. It's messy. It's complicated. Totally. So, like, where do we even go from here? How do we, I don't know, how do we engage with art and fandom online and still be, you know, passionate but also respectful? That is the million-dollar question. Yeah. And I don't think there's, like, a one-size-fits-all answer. Right. But I think it starts with, like, just being more aware. Mm. More aware of, like, who has the power in these situations. Mm -hmm. you know? And more willing to listen to each other and learn from each other. Totally. And maybe, like, think twice before you hit that share button because... 
let's be real, once it's out there. It's out there. The internet is forever. Right. It never forgets. On a on a lighter note though, I have to say I'm really impressed with how Arivo like responded to all this. Like she is so thoughtful, especially because, you know, you can tell this whole thing was really hurtful for her. I agree. She didn't shy away from the hard stuff. And by doing that, she like elevated the whole conversation. She could have just ignored it, but she chose to use her, you know, her position to really educate and speak up for herself and for others. And that's what makes her such a, like, a powerful artist and advocate. She knows her voice matters and she uses it. Exactly. And her being cast in this specific role, you know? It's even more interesting now, right? We're talking about this character, this woman, who's seen as wicked by everyone else, judged, misunderstood. And who ultimately embraces her own power. It's true. There's a real parallel there. Totally. It's like art imitating life, or in this case, casting reflecting reality. It really makes you think. It really does. It makes you think about all the other layers of meaning that might be in this new movie, like layers that we haven't even you know, started to see yet. And speaking of uncovering stuff, you know, Erivo, in her statement about the poster, she said that the new poster, it's an homage, not an imitation. I love that. It wasn't just about, like, her face being on there. It was about artistic interpretation about how she sees this character. That is so important. By saying that homage, not an imitation, she's taking back the narrative. She's like, this isn't just a copy. This is something new. And me being here, my blackness, that's all part of it. And that look she gives in the new poster, her eyes right at you. Right. That's about demanding to be seen, you know? It's about challenging how, for so long, people of color have been left out of these stories. Hollywood has always decided who gets to be the hero, who gets to be the villain, who gets to be everything in between. Arivo being Elphaba, it shakes that all up, and that's that's powerful. Yeah, and it's like she's not just taking it back for herself, you know, is for anyone who's ever felt like they were invisible or like nobody was listening. It makes you wonder, right, like how does this change the way we see this story now, this character, this whole thing going forward? That's what's so interesting. This isn't just like a poster snafu or about one actress. This is about how we deal with art, how we see it, and how sometimes the way we see it, it can actually like prop up harmful stereotypes <laughs> without us even knowing it. And uh, speaking of ways of seeing things, I have a feeling this movie's going to get people talking, you know? <laughs> get ready for the think pieces. Oh, for sure. And then, like, think pieces about the think pieces. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. It's kind of ironic, right? The whole point of Wicked is, like, challenging how we look at the world, okay. looking past what's right in front of us. Right. And that's exactly what this poster thing is making us do. Totally. It's forced everybody to really look at their own, you know, their own biases. It's probably uncomfortable, but it's good to have these conversations about representation and respect. Life imitating art, imitating life. Right. It really makes you think. So as we wrap up our deep dive here, is there like one thing you hope our listeners really take away from all this? If I had to pick one, mm -hmm. it would be this. Really think about the messages you might be putting out there. You know, whether you mean to or not, online, offline, it doesn't matter. Every little thing, every post, every like, every comment, it's all part of the story. And those stories, they can lift people up or they can tear them down. It's our choice. Yeah. Also. So to everyone listening, whether you're scrolling through your phone or buying those wicked tickets or just chatting about all of this, just remember the stories that really stick with us, the ones that stay with us, you know, after the curtain closes, they're the ones that challenge us, the ones that make us think differently, listen with an open mind, and, you know, just try to be a little more understanding. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. And on that note, we'll let you sit with all that. Until next time, happy Not. diving.